Eiffel Tower listeners, this is the 19th episode already. Already. 19. Not quite the 20th, but more on that in a second. We've got an interesting show this week. We've got two people from the Paris Fringe. Uh, if you don't know what that is, just stay tuned. We're about to talk about it. Uh, but we're going to be talking all about artists in Paris, the kind of new Hemingways, how Paris has changed, all that kind of stuff, right, James? That's right. Well, let's get on with it. Eiffel Tower with all of a G. As we said, 19th episode. You know what that means, James? I think it's time for a bit of celebration now. So we've, uh, we've gone ahead and we've already recorded our birthday episode for the 20th episode, and we're going to give you a little taste of what it is. Uh, should we whisper? Shh. Yeah. So, no, we're not going to whisper, but we've, we've got tour guides. We've broken their arm. Not quite broken, but we've held it against their back. <laughs> we've put a lot of work into getting them to tell us secrets about Paris. And, uh, yeah, breaking the code of tour guiding, I think, for them to do that, some of them. Uh-huh. They were very reluctant. But we put it together as the special ultimate birthday list for us to celebrate and for you to hopefully celebrate with us. 20th so, anniversary next yeah, week. 20th anniversary already. So stay tuned for that one. But uh, anyway, about today. Who have we got in the studio, James? We have. Pauline and You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> We've, pa- we've got Pauline and Charlotte. <laughs> Welcome to the studio, guys. Thank Pauline, you. Charlotte. Hello, hello. That sounds like a Kiwi accent. It is. You're not our first Kiwi on the show, pa- uh, Pauline. Sorry, Charlotte. <laughs> you both got so flowery right. tops, so it's uh, hard to, from a yeah. distance. Hard to differentiate. Black yeah. flowery tops. Yeah. And that, was that a Canadian accent? No. American? It's American. <sighs> Whereabouts? I grew up in New York. New York. Yeah. Some say the capital. It is. Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> including you, so, Pauline. Right. So, guys, I don't know who to who to ask this question to, but for the listeners who are going, what are Pauline and Charlotte doing? What is Paris Fringe? Sell it to us. Alrighty. Well, um, I guess we could start with what Fringe festivals are. Sure. So, um, Fringe, the Fringe is something that started in er- Edinburgh, um, Scotland. In, in Scotland, yeah, yeah, in the 1940s, and today it's um, one of the biggest theater festivals in the world and little by little um fringe festivals started popping up all over the world and fringe is in on the outskirts not as in the hair right exactly exactly and i think traditionally like historically it was the the shows that couldn't get into the international festival so they were like you know what we'll do it anyway yeah and we'll do it on uh, the fringe bill riley bill o'reilly we're going live. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So it it it's kind of a lot of the spirit of a fringe festival is people working together and kind of coming to coming together with maybe not a lot of means to put on uh, a show. And you, and now it's in Paris. And now there's one in Paris. Dun, dun, that dun, 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 dun. Uh, jingle, James. <laughs> we will find one later. We'll find a jingle. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the first edition was last year yeah. that uh, Charlotte worked on, and, and yeah. I, I joined the team this year. And so you guys, you're, let me get this straight, you're sort of in the communications team slash on stage. Yeah, I'm, I'm performing actually okay. this year. In, um, so we've, got, we've branched out the fringe a bit more this year. Where we've got a few extra a- um, aspects. So there's like the paid uh, fringe, where we've got international art, um, artists coming from all around the world, as far as Singapore. S- what? Wow! I yeah. know, right? Oy. Well, we've got listeners from further afield than that. Though, we don't have, we, we have, <laughs> all the way to Fiji. <laughs> Fiji. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. 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 G. G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, we we we've got them all coming from all over for that part of the fringe. So I think it's eighteen. 18 acts for the paid fringe um, and so there's international and local as well um, but then uh, as well as that we have a free fringe free fringe free fringe mm-hmm. okay now we're so talking free, can we give away some free free, t- free tickets to the free fringe on the Eiffel Tower Facebook yep. page alright <laughs> <laughs> so I've got it written down here that the Paris fringe is from the 18th to 28th of May yep. so that's really soon you're probably listening to this soon. in that week or, or coming up mm. um, and let me guess 9th, 10th Aaron Dismont kind of thing nailed it theatre area yeah it really is well done yeah. he's definitely someone knows his, uh, knows his Paris I'm a, I'm a fan of the arts and when the arts come and say we want to be on your podcast and talk about the arts I say let's do it is that what happened it sounds like an ad but it's not <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah no but Charlotte you've said that you're a fan of the show 
I, I <laughs> you've got to say yes. <laughs> I, I, but it, it was funny meeting you guys both because I was like, oh, it's weird. I've already, I've already heard your voices yeah. in the metro. Have you downloaded the? Uh, have you subscribed on iTunes yet? I have. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. it's probably our first sub- subscriber <laughs> to come in the, the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this would be wild. Okay, well, if you're listening to this on the metro and you're thinking, I didn't come here to listen to talking about. The Paris Fringe? Well, you didn't know what you were coming to listen to. That's what I respond. But we're also going to be talking about uh, this kind of idea of, I say down and out artists in Paris, but I've been told off about it before. But I'm, I'm talking about the modern Hemingways, the Hemingways of today. For anyone who doesn't know what I mean by Hemingway, who, uh, can someone explain? Ern- Ernest Hemingway, Ernest right? Hemingway. The, the writer, the writer. Um, who wrote a lot in Paris. Mm. What uh, th- I got a question for you guys. I know that you've got scripts that you're looking at, uh, <laughs> and now you're doing the cutthroat. <laughs> don't talk about my scripts. <laughs> but we, uh, the thing that me, James, James and I were talking about before the show is uh, back in the day, Hemingway was hanging out in the Latin Quarter, and that whole book is about how he lived down there and how he had no money and all that kind of mm. stuff. Yeah. Uh, We're interested in today. Yeah. Where, where would Hemingway be today? Or where would you guys be today mm. so that in 50 years people go, ah, oh, that was the trendy pl- part of... Uh, I want to go to where Pauline and Charlotte were <laughs> reading... No, writing. 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 Sorry, writing. Writing the next movable feast. So oh. tell us. Performing in the next movable feast. <laughs> stage, stage show. I, I um, don't, so where, I, where's the place to be? And I don't think it's the left bank anymore. No. No. Why not? Where well, is it? I think in part because of these, because of Hemingway in a way, people are like, ah, oh, gotta go, gotta go to this part of town. It's become quite, unfortunately, quite touristy. Expensive. Yeah, yeah and expensive. Mm. So there's one place that he used to hang out, was, which was called Café Flore. Um, and you can still go there and it's, it's cool, but it... Tourist trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to pay 19 euros for a coffee. Yeah. No, it's not that much. How no, much is not. it? Like six I or think, something? Yeah, it's yeah. great. And it's not going to be good coffee. So I, for me, I think a lot of people that... Uh, who actually write in Paris go to new versions of these kind of cool coffee yeah. shops spill the beans give us mm, some names yeah, I want, want one the... from each of you to start alright doesn't well, have to be coffee just somewhere where they're hanging out give us the secrets we're here to figure out the next Café de Flore the next Café de Flore mm. <laughs> oh my gosh um, okay. well I think uh, I guess there are a few places that I would recommend writing in so one um, is called La Recyclerie and it's the in the recyclery. Yeah, the recycling place. Perfect <laughs> translation, Ali. <laughs> so. Yeah. What is that, a cafe? Um, yeah, it's a cafe. I, I think you've been there too, yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a nice open space, and people bring their computers and they can work. I tell you what, a lot of cafe owners don't like people bringing their laptops. Mm. We've heard it They've on the show. Banned Wi Fi. Yep. Banned yeah. laptops, banned Wi Fi. Um, I think this is more of an w- encouraging work environment. Okay. Whereabouts um, is it, though? Um, I think the metro is Porte de Clioncourt yeah. on line 4. So Made in arrondissement. 18th. 18th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just up, uh, just up the road. Right, yeah. it is. Okay. And I think also, um, just when you look at Hemingway and, and when he was in Paris and his time here, uh, a lot of what I like in his writing was that although there were other American influences or... Uh, English-speaking influences, he was very much immersed in the Parisian life. So mm. he had routines with a lot of Parisian people, would mm. take vacations with his whatever wife he was on, yeah. um, with French people, and, and go so to... So you're town. saying he wasn't an expat? Well, no, he... Hang he, on, whoa, whoa. No, that's no, no, that's a big, that's, that's wow, a big, 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 big jump. No, he, he certainly <laughs> was an expat, but today the difference is that you have places like the Latin Quarter, which are just filled with... Mm. Um, expats and the kind of French influence is less and so less. So hang on, if I, if I go to the recyclery, am I going to be hearing English or am I going to be hearing French or what? You'll be hearing a lot of French. A lot of French. Um, okay. But there, I think there are. I mean, I, I think I've heard English there before, mm. but it's a nice mix. Okay. Um, okay, so. Charlotte, over to you. Mm. Doesn't have to be a cafe. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm thinking. Because it can be the next, you know, bench or <laughs> next bench. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the, the the place. Where's the place to be? Yeah, where's the place? We put you on the spot. Sp- You've listened the to the show before. To go. Oh my gosh! Well, I, okay. I mean, I do jump to to coffee shop because I am still I'm a, a big fan of coffee shops because in New Zealand we have like a huge coffee shop so- coffee shop scene. Huge coffee culture, you in know. New Zealand. So when mm. I came here, have I you mean, been to uh, Mata Mata? Oh yep. In yeah, the second and it's not even New it's Zealand. not even that Kiwi. It's just got our name. There's a sign that actually in the toilet from the mayor of Matamata that's like 
Thanks on. for bringing oh. Matter oh, Matter wow. to Paris. I talked to the owner of Matter Matter recently, and oh, she really? said that uh, <laughs> tour guides in New Zealand are often uh, encouraging New Zealand tourists to go to that cafe. Oh. Yeah, no, it isn't a cool part of town. But you're stalling, <coughs> Charlotte. We need a okay, recommendation. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I mean, I I do personally like also the place that I sometimes work at, Le Peloton. Le oh. Peloton. Yeah. Hey, we've had the guys from Le Peloton. The place. So I'm just just plugging that in. Do you know? Have you heard of uh, Paul's new? He doesn't listen to the show. I, I've <laughs> learned this, so we can talk about it. The chief, the owner. Do you know what his nickname is? The Baron? The master of the house. Oh, okay. Because he's con- like from Les Mis, which is a new topic <laughs> on this show that we always talk about. He's always talking to everyone and controlling the conversation. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Are you doing the same when you're working there? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> get into it. the vibe, get into the vibe. Uh, I agree with you. That's a cool place. Yeah. Le Peloton. Yeah. In the fourth. Whoa, it's actually weird that you say that because we're going to do reader emails right now, listener emails. Is it uh, time for? Yeah, yeah, play the jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Goes in there. <laughs> That's a good jingle. Um, so I asked people on Facebook to send in some uh, reader emails and one, this just reminded me what you said uh, and let me read it out to you. You had more fan mail, Lolly. It's not really fan mail, it's people that like the show. Here's, here's Anna Tinsman on Facebook. What cafe in the Marais is your favourite for people watching? And she adds, uh, I love having a cafe creme, which is like a, like a flat white or, right, flat white? Mm-hmm. Uh, in the early afternoon, while relaxing and enjoying my coffee, I like to people watch. I've been to the Marais before, but I've never been to a cafe. Mm-hmm. What is your suggestion? And guess what? This is a quick fire round. We're all doing one straight away. Me, Le Progrès, it's like a bar. You sit there at the end of Rue de Bretagne and you... Uh, or Rue de Brittany, as we call it in English, and you sit there and you can people watch. Anyone else? Um, my other one is Café Hugo, Café uh, Hugo, which is on the corner near Place des Vosges, so you can sit out there and then watch people oh, go Oh, is that the one on the, on the corner there that yeah, you yeah. near the traffic lights? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I've yeah. been there. Pauline looks worried. No? No. Um, I would say a cafe called Chez Janou, um, which isn't on a big street, but is kind of at a crossroads of two residential streets, so it's good for people watching. Okay. James? Whoa, I'm bad with names, but I'd say somewhere <laughs> towards Place des Vosges on that, again, bad with names, there's that big avenue that goes all along, yeah. and you can get any one of those cafes on the side. The one that's sort of underneath walking. the big archways and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah on that avenue. There you we'll go, find Anna Tinsman. Thanks for sending in your question. Let us know if you make it to any of those cafes. Shall we do another reader? E- re- reader? Let's go. They're not readers. They're listeners, aren't they? They're listener, <laughs> listener emails. Play the jingle again, James. <laughs> David Bell. He says, guys, love the show. <laughs> he didn't okay. say that he didn't he say did. that <laughs> I added it he said is it true that French you did the same thing last week <laughs> I know and then she emailed us and said guys I do love the show so maybe David will do the same uh. anyway David says is it true that French people don't even say sacre bleu oh. he says I said it to a Frenchman and he said they don't even say it yeah totally true James, there's no sacre bleu there's Frenchman. no comme ci comme ça there's yeah. no all of that okay. don't they say like oh la vache yep that's oh. That's, yep, oh that, that would be yeah way more appropriate you know what else yeah. they say oh la la and sometimes they say many la's have you heard that one yep. yeah oh, oh la la la, la, la. I, I count them I count and my oh record la, la, is and then you say like oh. six no I've, got, I've heard an eight I heard an eight once yeah Oh la la, oh la 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 People do that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> as long as you got the right tone to it, I think you can just keep going. Okay, before we get back to the new Hemingways, we're going to uh, do uh, a quick on-the-spot thing. It's called Theatre Facts of Paris. I haven't asked you guys to prepare it, but uh, James and I have got a fact each. And we're going to go around <laughs> and we're going to give them <laughs> listeners some facts. And we'll start, well, so you guys have some time to think about it. But Simon, mm-hmm. you're in the theatre world. Oh, you've got a cool fact. I've got a really cool one. You know the Opéra, the big uh, theatre down in the 10th, 11th, 9th, 9th? Um, <laughs> here, it's qu- pretty simple. It used to be a tennis court. Oh, <laughs> okay. It. <laughs> it used to be, what, it was built on top of the tennis court? Yeah, there tennis- was a tennis court, big, perfect size, and they went and built it there. It was a poet, I Just think. built it on top. Pierre Perrin or something like that. Okay. Just a quick fact. James, what do you got? What have I got as far as my theatre fun facts go? Um, you know La Cigale? Nope. In Pigalle? Mm-hmm. Nope. Yeah, Cigale, yeah. Um, the oh, theatre yeah, people in know Pigalle, the in Pigalle, oh, Okay, yes. all right. What's your pronunciation? Well... <laughs> <laughs> the, no, the, what's the, do you know the name of the cafe next to it? La Fourmi. Yes, that's Ooh. it. So La Cigale et la Fourmi is a fable by yeah. De La Fontaine. Ah, the famous French poet. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's, cool. that's pretty, yeah, I thought that was quite crafty. Very good. Pauline. There you go. Oh, goodness. Um, a fact about... Uh, no, you're just repeating. You yeah. have to do a fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to do a fact. I have to uh, find a fact in my brain. Okay. 
Can um, we go to a commercial break? Hey, actually, think about it because I can do a commercial. If you're listening, if you're wondering why we have such good uh, sound with the microphones, it's because we record this at World Radio Paris. They're doing a fundraiser for what is it for? Till the end of May. Till the end of May, get a bit of money, get some more music on the Not radio. Not just a bit of money, but to help us survive. So there you go. There's a little mm. ad for them. We do it as a podcast, but we record it in the 18th at World Radio Paris. Go on their website. Just uh, worldradioparis.com. Give them some money. Do and it for me. Give us some money. And that way, we'll be able to keep the Eiffel Tower on and we'll be able to keep uh, uh, World Radio Paris on digital radio as well. There you go. Add over. That's Straight it. to a fact. Um, Molière yep. died. The Shakespeare of France. Right. Died in. Uh, oh, wait. Um, no. Okay. Um, I changed my fact. Um, Molière died in the uh, sounds like the same fact what so far. is <laughs> Molière, Molière died in what third time today <laughs> is La Comédie Française in the same theatre ah, that is still mm. standing on stage on stage nope sitting no? in this oh. in the he w- but he was sitting on stage no Oh, no, I thought he was sitting in a seat in the audience. Yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte, let's do a fact. We're, <laughs> we're already pushing for time. All right, I'm not, I, I don't know if I have a complete um, historical fact, but I have a fun, like, current day theater thing. Shoot. Um, where, when lots of people can't uh, afford to perform in theaters here, they just perform in apartments. So a lot what? of shows happen uh, in apartments here. That's cool. Yeah, so and like big lofts mouth? and this kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you find um, out? Give us a website or something. How would um, I, how would there's I find several. It? There's one called Foreplay um, because it's four plays F-O-U-R, in it. F-O-U-R, play. Yeah. Yep, okay. And another one called Tapis Théâtre, which is a like rug theater in, okay. in, some, okay. in, in a lounge. Another, another one called the Loft Sessions, this kind of thing. Do you go to those? Yeah, go to them. Uh, how's, what's it like? It's fun. It's so cool. It sounds, really, it sounds like really friendly. It sounds like, like you put a, your slippers yeah, on and just yeah, like watch it. Yeah, sometimes people bring slippers. <laughs> and it's just like fun, you know, you can just like a little bit of a party with a bit of theater. So what happens? You pay money and you rock up sometimes, or you walk yeah, in? Sometimes, yeah, it's like five bucks on the door, yeah. ten bucks on the door or something like that. At one of them, you get dinner with the show as well. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a good theater fun fact. Do you need credentials like yeah. to get in or anything like that? Or just that's kind of you're in the know. Well, now everybody's yeah, in now the know. Yeah, now everyone's mm. in the know. How do we, get, how do we get in the know? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, they've got Facebook pages and this kind of thing. You like what them. are the Facebook pages? Well, they're, they're names. For the play, names. Okay. <laughs> We're going to put all the links on the site, the yeah. Tower dot. It's still a WordPress, but the WordPress.com. It's probably where you find where you found this very episode, I reckon. Mm-mm-mm. I think we need to do more about this uh, Hemingway stuff. What have you got in your notes? Give us the most interesting. All right. Um. And we'll form a conversation around it. <laughs> Well, I mean, we can always talk about Shakespeare and Company. Ooh. We mentioned that already. We have no, we mentioned no, it no, briefly no. at the start yeah. of the episode because yeah. we had Elaine Shalino, the author, on our second episode inside the Shakespeare oh, and Company right. bookshop. Yeah, we went actually went into the the back room, didn't we? First Where time James was on the back of my scooter as well. I was scared. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. What do you want to tell us about it? Well, Shakespeare and Company was open, I think, nineteen ninety early 1900s um, and hang on what did you say 1990 1919 oh wow yeah uh, okay. I think yeah. <laughs> not 1990 I was gonna say um, but the, the I think it originally the, the one where it is now so it's been rebuilt in like the 1950s a new one was reopened and um, and essentially what I should say is that yeah Hemingway and all these sorts of writers used to hang out at that at that bookstore because it was an Eng- it's an English bookstore sure um, that hasn't become a tourist trap Oh, it sure has. It has, has a, it? a little bit, but, <laughs> but I don't know. It's there's they've still got it's still kind of it's still charming, uh, and especially this is open quite late until eleven. So if you go later in the night, you can be there at like ten p.m. Yeah. and read a book. I I above. found that by accident. That's yeah. really cool. There's yeah. also a piano upstairs. Yeah, mm. and you can write notes on their typewriter. Well, you can write. There's a typewriter there too, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. What's the deal with the beds? Well, yeah, they started a, this thing called tumbleweeding because the guy. Uh, Walt Whitman, who reopened it, he he said this thing. Walt Whitman from Breaking Bad. Did I just say? Whoa! No, no, I I <laughs> did, I, did I say it no, wrong? No, you said it wrong. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm just doing it for the listeners who maybe don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, not not him. <laughs> oh, not that one, Walter but, White. But okay. he said, um, he said, be not in hospital. And be not inhospitable to strangers because they could be angels in disguise. Mm. And so he kind of uh, started this tradition of, of bringing people into the bookstore, strangers, and letting them letting them stay on there. And then and travels through Paris, and that still continues today. And they're called tumbleweeds. So you cool. can go into Paris and well, go into the bookstore and be like, "Will you take me?" And sometimes they'll be like, "Yes," and sometimes they'll say, "How no. do they judge?" I don't know. 
Wow. Have yeah, you, you done it before? just get a vibe. No, no, no. Some of them, I've got a few friends who have and yeah. Oh, wow. But that's how a lot of people come in. How long do you stay there for? I think it's only a week or a few weeks, but it's kind of to help you get your your footing when mm. you first when you first I've heard that you have to work for it though. Like you yeah, have you have to yeah. work a couple hours a day yeah. and apparently initially you had to read a book a day as well. Oh, um, but oh that's great. I know. But that's easy now because they got the new children's book section. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> slam through that easy. <laughs> it's good yeah. for accommodation actually. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Come in there Good tip. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go on to the next bit, which is asking you, will you run the Earful Towers Instagram for the week as Paris Fringe? Yeah. Yeah. So what can people expect? Crazy cool photos of our mascot. Yeah. That's the red guy. <laughs> or, right? Yeah, the red guy. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait listeners spot, can't see the red guy. <laughs> no, there's a guy that I've seen him on their Instagram. It's like mm-hmm. a guy with a red, uh, what is that, like a full Morph body suit? suit? Yeah. But it's like and it's also wearing a tutu. And a tutu. Yeah. And is he on every one of your photos then? Yeah, and yeah. like our poster. And he's kind of like our, our mascot for the fringe. So he's, you know. Okay, then I'll give you guys the password and then show the mascot, but also show some of the things that we mentioned in this show. Yeah, for so sure. Everyone that follows, it's just at the Eiffel Tower. These guys are going to be running it. When you're listening to it, they'll already be running it. So uh, follow in and follow them as well. What is it? At Paris Fringe, I imagine. Le Paris Fringe. Oh my God, French. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, look, we've got. We're at 25 minutes already, so I think we were just going to have to fly do, through it. Wow. Yeah, Woo-hoo. I think we're going to have to really do... really fast. Uh, yeah, James, <laughs> James is doing like this sign. Uh, <laughs> it's time for the pew pew. Pew 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 pew. pew. <laughs> Quick fire round. <laughs> <laughs> you listened to the show before. That's you how it works. In sound, yeah, you put the sound effects in. No, sometimes we just do the sound <laughs> effects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, low, cost, low cost sound effects. This is turning into uh, one of the most common messages that I get and even in the uh, the reviews we get on iTunes is that people love the quick fire round. So it's, it's here to stay. And in case I think people like hearing recommendations from people who've been to certain places. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, it's, when you hear about something from a friend, it's not the same thing as reading about it online. Mm. Mm. Hence why we're about to put you on the spot. And we're going to do three each. We usually do five. We're going to do six today. And uh, are you ready? Yep. Sure. What is the best theatre in Paris to be inside of? Odeon. Tell me more. Um, the not, Berthier, not the one in the 17th, the one in the 6th. And it is, it's just beautiful. When you enter, there are tiles on the floor and two huge staircases and old, huge paintings. Great. And the inside is just beautiful beautiful with multiple balconies and the whole top is painted Pauline's the quick fire around <laughs> it's just incredible okay Charlotte uh, no, my, no 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 Whoa, oh, you're no. not going to get time to think about uh, it you get no, a different no, question one. Oh, no no I've got one oh okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> obviously never listened to the show before <laughs> uh, Charlotte where is the best 10 minute walk you can do in the city um I think just really wandering through the Marais okay. is night. So, really for example, where? Uh, give us a give us a round. Where do you start, where, where yeah. you start uh, from? You start from you start from Place des Vosges, yep. and then you walk just down the Franc uh, Bourgeois. Okay, I think that's what it's called. You made that one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. And you just wander wander down there. Yeah. Okay. And you you take a take a stroll onto your left if you want. Take a go to your right, and you'll find little galleries and okay. and old women smoking cigarettes and this kind of thing. It's great. Pauline, best place for people watching. That's not a cafe. Bar. Best bar. Best bar for people watching. What's your question, Ollie? Yeah. <laughs> I'm you confused. heard me. You heard okay, me. Okay, best bar for people watching. Yep. Um, chez Camille. There's it's a bar in Montmartre cool. in the 18th. Uh, Rue Ravignon. Okay. And um, it's it's a great place to people watch. Okay. Uh, we got to be even quicker now. All right, you ready? Okay. Uh, best place for a cafe that's not the Peloton. Charlotte. Um, okay, 10 bells. 10 bells in the trendy 10th? Yep. Yep, by the canal? Yep. What's so good about it? Uh, cool vibe, cool team. Uh, right next to the canal, you can get takeaway coffee okay. and hang out by the afternoon. And best place, Pauline, to take a tourist when you've only got half an hour. Quick. My God. They're getting on the Eurostar. Um, it's just there. It's just left. It's leaving. Best place to yes, take a tourist yes. um, would be too quick. <laughs> They're running out of time. Uh, the train's would gone. be to um, uh, uh, walk around Montmartre. <laughs> okay. Very good. And uh, <laughs> half an hour. Thanks, Charlotte, 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 Charlotte uh, last question and quick. What favorite metro station? 
New question. Um, uh, Babes Rochechoua, because it just sounds hilarious. It is such say. a good one to pronounce. I love Babes it. Babes Rochechoua. Just, you said just it, for the name. It's Japanese almost. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, it's uh, before we say goodbye, because we've run out of time, I'm just going to say one more reader email, uh, listener email that we've got mm-hmm. from Dingo Mike. Dingo Mike is back. <laughs> he's in every he's show. A, he's a guys, I've listened When he to, isn't here. He said, I've listened to all of your episodes. Uh, good for you, Mike. Thanks for that. Uh, and then I started listening to some more podcasts, and they all do cliffhangers at the end, and oh. you guys never do. It's because we're not we're not really cliffhangery, are we? It's because just we we just live every day. We don't know we don't know what's happening next but week. We do know what's happening next week. <coughs> it's our twentieth birthday. We're going to be what are we doing again? Oh yeah, the big special <laughs> secrets. <laughs> I think of we Paris. got some spe- secrets of secrets of Paris. So stay tuned for that. But as for you girls, thanks very much for coming in, Charlotte. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Polly. Check out Paris Fringe. All the links will be in our uh, Facebook and on the site. Enjoy your week and stay tuned for our Secrets of Paris episode next week. Bye. 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 Eiffel Tower with all the virgins.